Manny, are you ever afraid of the tax of Satan on you? Well, I gotta admit, I used to be. <laughs> I gotta. I I used to be quite a bit afraid. Uh, now I understand it so well that there's only certain times when I am afraid of the attacks of Satan on me and on my family. And I'm going to explain all that to you right now. What we're going to do here, and I gave you an outline. If you want to go on Facebook on the, my homepage, there's an outline there so you can fill in. So you don't have to remember everything unless you want to go back and rewind the video. But we got to answer some preliminary questions. Some people don't even believe Satan exists. I talk to people, all oh, Satan, uh, it's a myth. It's, it's a superstitious fairy tale. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that Satan alive is alive and well on planet Earth. That's how Lindsay wrote that book back in 1970, 71, something like that. Uh, that really was became a bestseller. And we're 50 some years down the road from that. And Satan is alive and well. He is very active in the world. He runs the cosmos system. And he has subliminal attacks on Christians. And that's what we're going to talk about today, his attack specifically on Christians that many Christians are not even aware of. Okay? He has a way of getting in your mind and getting you to believe a lie like if it was true. Okay, so what I'm going to give you is a biblical, topical exposition of Satanology and how he attacks specifically Christians. This should free you to not be afraid if you do certain things. <laughs> Okay, let me go into so I don't get way ahead of me. So the first question is that we got to ask, can Christians be attacked by Satan? Well, 1 Peter 5.8 answers that. It says, be of sober spirit, be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls about, about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour 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 you know what that means it's a roaring lion he wasn't a passionate i, I mean a, a calm lion he's a roaring lion Urgh! he wants to eat you up okay so we see that yeah satan can attack christians what happens after satan finds someone to devour and that's very interesting in job we find uh, uh this discussion now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves to the Lord, and Satan came among them. So you have here on my board, you have both fallen angels, which are headed up by Satan, and there's demons. And then you have unfallen angels, which are messengers, protectors, deliverers, executioners. And, and I'll tell you more about that later. But over here, you have Satan and demons that have revolted against God, and they're bringing attacks against Christians. So you, we need to recognize that he has different strategy for believers as opposed to unbelievers. Okay? Now, so we, we, we see this occasion where angels went to heaven, and along came with them, tagging along with Satan. And the Lord said to Satan, from where did you come? And Satan answered the Lord and said, from roaming around the earth and walking about it. He's always, he cannot, he's not omnipresent like God is. He can only be one place at a time. So he's walking around, he's looking. Okay. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on earth, a blameless and upright man, fearing God and turning away from evil. So he kind of challenges, probes Satan, and Satan answered the Lord, does Job fear God for nothing? Kind of being sarcastic. And uh, he says, he, he says, thou has made a hedge about him in his house and all that he has on every side. Thou has blessed the work of his hands and his possession and has increased his land. 
Who's the one that held Job? It was God. And Satan says, you know what, God, you got a hedge about him. I can't touch him. Okay, you not only got a hedge around him, but you have blessed everything he does. And then he takes that and he says to God, he challenges, but put forth thy hand now and touch all that he has. He will surely curse thee to your face. What a tremendous challenge Satan poses to God on an individual on earth. Take away some of his possessions. Touch his family. I guarantee you, he'll curse you to your face. Once you stop giving him what he wants, he's going to turn away from you, God. Now, Job don't know what's going on behind the scenes, okay? And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not put forth your hand on him. And so Satan departed and went. He got permission from God to go and attack Job, a righteous and upright man. Okay, so... When Satan finds someone to devour, the first thing he does is he consults God for permission and the extension of how much he can punish him. Does that seem fair? I'll get to that in a minute. So, and, 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 and we also read in Luke 22, 31, and, and Jesus is telling Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. And I'm going to talk about that too. Why God gave him permission to do that. Okay, so two things when Satan finds someone to devour. First of all, he has to have permission to attack a Christian. He doesn't have free will to attack any Christian on his own uh, volition. Okay. Second of all, he can only attack that which God allows. He can't attack everything. Only what God says he can attack. Okay? Now, why would God allow Satan to attack a Christian? That's a, that's a question a lot of people are always like, why, why, God, God, why you do this? You know? And so God has given us some answers. First of all, one, to demonstrate the glory and power of God. That's what he did with Job. Okay, we know about what happened at the end of the story of Job. Job did not curse God. His wife tried to get him to curse God. <laughs> In fact, she, she, the only noticeable uh, expression of Job's wife was in the negative. She said to Job, Job, to her husband, your breath stinks. <laughs> Curse God and die. Imagine your wife telling you that. Job had a lot of integrity and he hanged tough. His friends even accused him of God. Job, you must have done something. If you were raised Catholic, I guarantee you, if you did something in your past, you're still looking over your shoulder to see when God is going to bring about retribution and vengeance on you. A lot of people think like that. Job's friends thought like that. Job, you must have did something wrong. He didn't know that God was using him as a way to encourage all the believers that were going to come after him to see that there was a purpose in testing and in trials, okay? And to demonstrate God's glory and God is fair. You know, at the end of Job's life, God gave him back every He had lost his family. He lost his health. He lost his business, okay? His wife and friends turned against him. But, it, but yet God increased him so much more after he passed through all those trials, as Satan went running away with his tail between his legs. Okay, so 
that's one reason it has happened to Johnny Erickson Tata. Many of you know she was paralyzed at the age of 17. Why would God allow that? Well, you know, Johnny has been a tremendous, uh, she's one of, one of my spiritual mentors that I really admire and look up to, among others. Uh, and she has helped many of people that are in wheelchairs or uh, suffering uh, debilitating injuries and, and so forth. Uh, it happened to my uncle. As a pastor at the age of 50, he was paralyzed when a truck driver fell asleep at the wheel and uh, ran over him. In fact, that Sammy, who you're praying for for a heart, that was his father. Sammy suffered a lot too. But why does God do it? One, because God wants to demonstrate his power in our weakness. And he also wants to get glory in defeating the devil and his lies. Another reason why God allows Christians to be attacked by Satan is for the believer's own good. In 2 Corinthians 12, 7, it says this, And because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, this is Paul, after he came back from heaven, he said, For this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, to keep me from exalting myself. God allowed Paul to be continually humbled by Satan because of all the, the beautiful revelations he saw when he had the opportunity to go to heaven and come back. Okay? It was also why uh, Peter was attacked by Satan. You remember the story, very interesting. The disciples of all things, here Jesus is getting ready to go to the cross. You would, you would, they don't understand that. And they're arguing about who would be the greatest. Who's going to be the greatest in that kingdom, you know? And they're fighting among each other. And Jesus takes off his robe, or which is, was his, signified as his rank, and began to wash their feet and said, whoever be great must be a servant of all. He said, you want to be great? Fine. Instead of climbing the ladder up, you climb the ladder down. You want to be great, but you got to do it my way. you got to become a servant. So they're arguing about that. That's what's going on in their mind. And Jesus talking about going to the cross, and Peter, real bold and bravado and macho and all that, he says, you know what? I'm going to go with you, and if they kill you, they're going to have to kill me too. And Jesus says to Peter, Satan has these requested permission to sift you like wheat. Before this day's over, you're going to deny me three times. You're going to deny me. Peter said, not me. And he went and got a sword. And sure enough, when the guards came, he went over there and followed Jesus to the courtyard where the fire was and people recognized him. Aren't you one of the disciples? Oh, no, 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 not me. Not me. Oh, that, and he begins to curse Jesus. Early on, before that, when they came to get Jesus, he took his sword and cut a high priest's ear off. Jesus took that ear and put it back on that servant and healed him. So he does it, in, in that case, he did it to home. It says in Romans 8.28, For we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to the purpose. Whenever we talk about God allowing Satan to attack Christians, we have to be reminded of two facts. One of them is that God is sovereign. Okay? He's the one that's in control. Even though Satan may be attacking you, God is still sovereign over that whole affair. Satan can only go so far into the extent of what God allows him to do. He just can't do whatever he wants. So you got to remember, no matter or when you are attacked, if God is still sovereign, 
He's overseeing the thing. Okay? Second thing, which is real important because this goes along with the first one. God is good. God wouldn't let anything bad happen to you unless he knows that the outcome is good. The outcome for Job was good, not only for Job, but all of the future Christians that come after him. But not only that, do you know, do you actually realize that his, he lost all the kids that were partying at the time? <laughs> you know, and yet God gave him a whole new set of kids, a whole new set of children that were more appreciative, you know, of who he was. Okay, so uh, he does it to humble people, and he also does it uh, for Christians' own good. Now, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, No temptation has overtaken you, but such that is common to man. But God is faithful and will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able. But when the temptation comes, he's going to provide a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, that being said, I asked at the very start if I was ever afraid of Satan attacking me. For the most part, no, but there is one time or when I'm in a certain state that I'm very afraid. That's what I'm going to share with you right now. Are there occasions when Satan can attack a Christian without God's specific permission or protection? And the answer to that is yes. Let me show you something. Here's the fallen angels, Satan, and demons. These are all born-again believers. Satan wants to attack the Christian here. As long as he remains in the will of God and under God's protection, he has protection, just like an umbrella preventing rain from hitting your head. But if he goes out of the will of God, moves out from under God's protective will, he opens himself up to attacks from Satan willfully. And the way Satan does this is so insidious. I'm going to share more of that later on because some of it is so secretive, so covered up, so you have to really think to grab the lie that he's saying that has so criminated our society. You know, and, and God wants us to be aware of the schemes of Satan and you have to learn these things or you're going to fall into the trap. But if you get out of God's will, you know, what happened to the prodigal son? Huh? He ran out from under his father's protection, took his inheritance, went and spent it on a bunch of whores in a faraway city, drinking. Next thing you know, he's in a pig pen. Okay? That was not God's will. He ran out from under God. How many Christian teenagers do you know that have rebelled against their parents? have gone out into the world, they got their freedom, now they can do whatever they want, and little did they realize they were, they were free. They just became enslaved to Satan out there in the pig pen of the world. Or Satan is the ruler of this world. He's the head of the cosmos. You think he doesn't know how to take a naive teenage boy or girl and rip them apart? I mean, you see all these kids that are running away from home, they're getting hooked on fentanyl, they're uh, turning into runaways that end up in prostitution, doing drugs. They're never the same again. Oh, how good they had it. They just didn't realize it. They became unthankful, and in unthankful they ran out. Wives too. How many wives have run out from under their marriage vows and opened themselves up to the attacks of Satan? Men too. You know, and, and, and gone out doing things they shouldn't have done, wouldn't have done, if they'd have stayed in the will of God. And I've known many that have even lost their lives doing that. I had friends that contacted hepatitis C, AIDS, sexually transmitted diseases, 
end up in prison and jail because they did things. How many believers are there? We got all kind of believers in morgues, in prisons. I see them out here, homeless. Because they've opened themselves up to the attacks of Satan and Satan is ripping them up and they don't know what to do. They don't even understand it. Yeah, you don't want to be a prodigal. You're under the protection of command. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, parents. You know, I had this one friend in Bible school who used to always say, you know, we had it hard growing up, but I'm so thankful I had a godly mother and father. You know, we didn't have much, but they gave me the best thing that they could have given me. And that is a trust and belief in God. Faith isn't transferable. Okay, every child has to execute their own faith. Okay, so that's one time. It's when you get out from under the will of God. Another time is when a believer in the church, in the local church, is excommunicated. This was happening in the church of Corinth. <coughs> Excuse me. I actually did that and somebody told me I had a sneezing demon. That's some of the superstitious nonsense and things that go on out there. Nonsense. I don't have a sneezing demon. I had a sneeze. God bless you, Manny. Okay. What was I saying? I, I, now I lost my, my train of thought. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here. There was a there was a believer in the church of Corinth that was in an immoral affair with his father's wife, his stepmother. When the apostle and they were bragging about it, when the apostle Paul found out, he told the church to excommunicate this person, to turn him over to Satan. He says, deliver over to Satan so that he may be taught not to blasphemy. When you go outside of the will of God, obviously this young person was. He was doing it in the church. How many people are doing it in the church today? He was excommunicated. Back then they practiced church discipline. They don't do that anymore. None of the churches around here, they're so busy entertaining, you know, and feeding your flesh, they don't have time to rebuke you, tell you, hey, what you're doing is wrong. No, they won't do that. They're scared they may lose their job or their pension or, or you know, 401k or something. <laughs> Get them out. And what happens when he goes out? Satan just begins to what, devour him. And later on, after this young man was devoured, the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians says, hey, bring him back. He's learned his lesson. Whenever someone is excommunicated, put out, it is always done with the idea of reconciliation when it is a believer. It's never done with the idea of being permanently banished. You want to bring him back. Okay. He had to learn that, you know. And James 5.20 says, Let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. You see somebody doing something, you confront them. Let they get too far gone and they end up getting devoured by Satan. There's another time is when, so when you go outside of the will of God, when you're banished from the local church, and another time, as when a Christian has unconfessed sin in his life. So I've learned, I, I'll be honest with you. Am I ever scared? Yeah. These are times when I'm scared. If I've done something and I don't want to confess it, I'm scared. I'm more scared of me than I am of the devil. Okay? I don't want to walk out of the will of God. I don't want to be excommunicated by being habitually in sin in such a way that I get thrown out. Nor do I want to have any 
unconfessed sin in my life. That's why the Bible says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. Don't get the devil a foothold. If I offend somebody, I do something wrong, man, right away, I'm going to take care of it today. I'm not going to wait till tomorrow. Now, some people won't, they won't be at peace with you. They won't reconcile with you. You tell them, hey, I'm sorry, I forgive you. Yeah, they flip you off. Well, the ball's not in your court anymore. You did what God asked you to do. Your prayers are not going to be hindered now. You can still walk in faith and experience God's protection over your life. But early on in my Christian walk, I shoot, I'm not going to tell them to forgive me. I'd shoot them and put a bullet in their eye. You know, I was my, <laughs> there was a guy talking about who's the most dangerous person in the world to be around. And he, and he, and he talked about three different conditions. And I think, oh, look, I beat all three. You know, and uh, not anymore. I'm a, I, mean, I talk a lot, but I'm harmless. But, you know, the, the, the point being is that my greatest fear is that I walk out of God's will. I'm out from under his protection. And um, I'm so hard in my heart, I don't want to confess my sin. That's when it becomes dangerous for me. There is a sin unto death. And, and, and people, let me tell you, God is so gracious. He's so good. He's so compassionate. He's so merciful. He knew everything you were going to do before you were even saved. And he saved you anyway. You know, he doesn't, nothing you've done has taken him by surprise. Satan wants to put those seeds in your head. And in fact, the next message I'm going to talk about uh, on the next one is how he actually does it. Uh, so those are a couple times. That's when he has unconfessed. That's when I get scared. Okay. Now, why does Satan attack believers? Well, first of all, he wants to destroy our fellowship with God. Okay, and that's the first thing I miss. I know when I sin, the first thing I have, oh, man, I had such a great fellowship. I felt so good, you know, and I had all this joy in my life. Why would I give that up? You know, it's, it's, there's no greater joy, people, than having a deep fellowship with God. People ask him, Manny, where are you going on vacation? I, Wherever God is, I'm on vacation. I come here, I got a little 500 square foot apartment. Yet I'm very happy and comfortable here because I know God's presence is here. You know, and, 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 and that's what I want more than anything else in the world is to know that I'm in fellowship with God, I'm pleasing to Him, and I'm doing the things that He wants me to do. You know, and I get filled with the Holy Spirit, and I sense His joy, and He opens providential circumstances for me every day. You know, and I get to witness to people, I get to do Bible teaching, I get to still play sports as long as this body keeps holding together. I'm in a lot of pain, but it keeps me humble. Okay. He 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 why does Satan win? Because he, he he wants to rob us of fellowship. He also wants us to curse, deny, and sin against God. Okay? This is why he attacked Job. This is why he attacked Peter. This is what he did to Adam and Eve. And lastly, he wants us to worship him and not God. Yeah, what does it say in Luke 16:13? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, or other things. What do we learn here? Can Satan attack Christians? Yes. But he's limited to what he can do and cannot do. Okay? When are you most vulnerable to Satan's attacks? Is when you move yourself outside of the will of God, when you have unconfessed sin in your life, when you're habitually into something that you shouldn't be doing. That's when you are in the most dangerous place. 
Somebody once said the most safest place in the world is in the center of God's will. In that place there's great protection, there's great provision. And that's a place where God wants to keep you, but Satan wants to take you out. I'm going to give another outline on my Facebook. I'll do it probably Sunday. And uh, we're going to talk about specifically how he attacks Christians on the next message. Okay, God bless you all. Have a great day. Bye-bye.